I'm surprised at your use of such a tired metaphor, and you call yourself a poet. You see, he tries to make you lose your train of thought. I should think you need any help with that. Where's my drink? You should have enough. You know, she loses count after ten cocktails. Anyway, I am living. Ha ha ha! You happen to be interrupting our conversation. Oh, really? I am sorry. It's great, all right. Don't pay any attention to him. It's our thing. The reason why I don't live here is because Rodney and I are. We are inseparable. The question of living, although it arises constantly, is there I say? Moot? Is that right, Rafi? What? Can I say the question of my living is moot? Irrelevant! What? <laughs> the question of your living is irrelevant. <laughs> but I suppose you don't think the question of my living is irrelevant since he just tries to kill me. Well, actually, I'm not. Rodney! This lady doesn't think the question of my living is irrelevant. Who doesn't? She doesn't. <laughs> well, she doesn't know the facts. Oh, apparently you don't know the facts. Only Rodney, of course, knows the facts. The world according to Rodney. My God! Well, when you come to think of it, the Rodneys of this world are men's salvation, in a way. Really, really, really shy. You sound like a cheap novelist. It's poetry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he despises poetry. Actually, he despises all art. Because art is the act of climbing to the top of that ridiculous wall of his and standing on the ledge to look out into a cruel and pointless world devoid of meaning. Where fact is merely fiction, and anybody with any kind would simply leap off the edge and be done with that. The crystal <laughs> guy, go ahead and push me. I will not if I were you. That would be much too quick for him. He'd rather kill me little by little than all at once. <laughs> One more word and I'll blow your head. I do hope that's a gun, Rodney, and not just your finger. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all a secret, isn't it? Now come inside, I don't want any kill in this edge time. Will you excuse us?
talking about? Aren't we both talking about the same thing? I was talking about your neighbors, about the gunshot. Oh, the gunshot. <laughs> about whether I heard it or not. <laughs> Maybe there's 
there might have been an accident, but it turned out it was nothing. It was all a mix-up. Nothing? You don't know what's going on in the world, don't you? Well, I used to think I did. Now I don't know. So, you think all these things happen by chance? Just one great big happy coincidence? Gunshots are fired. Then they're not fired. This woman appears who was never there. That light in the apartment. I guess you didn't see that either. What light? Over there. No, it just went on. Don't look. What? Lights are going on and off everywhere. You don't think everybody's on a jeep. <laughs> and on what? There is something, isn't there? What? What are you talking about? No. I'm not even really sure. You think I'm confused? That I never said you were. Well, who said that was then? Nobody. Well, who gave you that information? I then? have no information. Oh, you don't. Well, I don't either. Back. What were we talking about? <laughs> I'm not even sure. Huh. Uh, was I being incoherent? You're bound to take it the wrong way. <laughs> what? Whatever I say. What are you going to say? Well, you asked if you were being incoherent. If I say you were, you'd fly into panic, and if I say you weren't, you'd think I'm hiding something. <coughs> Not at all. The word insane didn't even came into it. I mean, no position to judge the state of your mind. You're not a psychiatrist. Well, why would you say that? I didn't mention anything about a psychiatrist. I was only making a point. Well, you can make a point without mentioning a psychiatrist. You could have mentioned a proctologist. No, why would I do that? Have it your way. Let me correct myself. I'm in no position to judge the state of your mind. I'm not a proctologist. Why are you making fun of me? I'm sorry. Do you find psychiatry amusing? Let me tell you, it's no joke. I never said it was. It's serious work involving lots of time and dedication. We don't even get paid nearly as much as you'd like to think. You're a psychiatrist? Why do you say it like that? What are you implying? I'm not implying anything. I'm just a little surprised. <laughs> Why are you surprised? Do you find something strange about it? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not even looking at you. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Are you afraid of me? Afraid I'll find out your dark, terrible secret? You can tell me. I'm a psychiatrist. <laughs> Here, take my card. <laughs> you can set up an appointment with my secretary. I work nights at the loony bin, but I have private practice in the morning. <sighs> Look at the time. I gotta run now. It's time to go to work. Though I haven't slept in years. What difference does it make to them? They're all drugs! <laughs> I hate it, people. They drive me crazy. They didn't mean it like literally crazy. Didn't think that literally, did you? No. Are you patronizing me? No. <laughs> Don't patronize me. I'm the doctor, and I and you'll come to realize in the future, once we've established a professional relationship, that you'll come to rely on me for emotional support. I'll be the one who's carrying the weight of all your problems so you can feel free to let go. You won't have to hang on to your sanity any longer. I'll be the one who's hanging on, because that's my job. <laughs> Do you know if I'm smoking? No, no. Would you like one? I don't know. I can't. 
I've never tried one before. Here, be my guest again. Take them all. <laughs> I guess it can't do any wrong now. And I certainly won't be smoking them. <laughs> I have a question I forgot to ask you. My God, she wasn't even there. I I'm here. I'm <laughs> having a cigarette. Oh! Who's that? It's Benedict. I, I don't know. I don't think she's in there. Uh, what was your question? What question? I don't know. You wanted to ask me something. Was it a personal question? It was. It was a question. It was personal. Can I have a gift with you? Sure. What does she want? I don't think she wants anything. I think she's really just having a cigarette. Uh, well, does she know about our conversation? No. Well, you must pretend like you never spoke. You're speaking now. Act like you don't know me. I don't. Otherwise, she'd think. Just because you're seeing the psychiatrist, you can see. That kind of information can get us wrong. <coughs> Never 
meant a great deal to me, but she didn't go with anything either. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. You're still here. Take a couple of these. What are these? Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. Nothing. It's okay. Huh, then, uh, well, you want to take a couple of these. <laughs> these bring you up, what will those bring you down? <laughs> so it's better to take them both at the same time. <laughs> Just to keep you more or less balanced. <laughs> Until I get back to you. <laughs> How long are you going to be out there? I don't know. Well, don't rush, I can wait. <laughs> Will it be more than 10 minutes? Will it be more than 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes? I really don't know. What did you say? You know, you have your thoughts and you need somewhere to think them. I understand. Did you? Well, of course. I value my privacy too. A person needs to be alone with God. So, go ahead. I'm not going to bother you anymore. What are you doing? Oh, it's nothing really. What happened? Are you asking me what I've got in my hand? No, I know what you've got. You've got money. Then you don't need to ask. I thought you had some thinking to do. Don't let me interrupt. You were in the middle of prayer. You no, know I was. In fact, I'm not even sure if I believe in God. Sometimes people lose their faith. They need hard evidence. But the evidence is everywhere. Where? Well, since you asked about the money, I'm going to tell you all about it. There's a man below us. Last night, he cried out for help. He's in trouble, you see. His wife left him. He drinks heavily. He lost his job. He was a carpet wholesaler or a carfish processor. I'm not really sure. He slurs his words quite a bit. His son was killed in a motorbike accident or murdered with a knife. Six months ago, a friend of his was killed in a freak accident involving either a stray piece of glass, the spraying of some gas, or a suspension bridge collapse. <laughs> now, here I've been thinking, he's asked for money, and God is answering. <laughs> <laughs> it's not here. Well, unfortunately, you're on the wrong floor. I can't help the people up here on the seventh story, but the people on the fifth and the sixth Oh, well, look, doctor. You were answering all the prayers? Not all. I tried to spread things around a little. A toaster here, an electric heater there. Besides, they can't have everything they ask for. I've only got this much, and I wouldn't want them taking it for granted. Miracles don't just happen, you know. They require a lot of prayer. You can't expect people to believe this is God's work. You might as well believe in Santa Claus. And what's the procedure if they don't believe? Do you learn overdo electric bills and eviction notices? My God, you did. I'm giving him the rent money. Everything will be fine now. He was lost, and now he's found. Plus, <laughs> the poor man lost his wife, his job, his son, and his best friend. Isn't that punishment enough? You weren't involved in any of that, were you? Look, these people' lives have changed. You've never heard so many prayers as the ones that rise up from directly below this window. And that is the power of faith. Hoping for a church. How do you know it's not the power of greed? Look, I don't know who you are or who sent you, but I have a pretty good idea, and you're not going to alter my faith. I have no interest in your faith. You can keep it. So where did you get that drink? I'll be looking everywhere. Nobody's drinking anything. Is this a new trend or what? First, nobody was smoking, so I had to give up smoking. I never really liked smoking, but everybody was smoking and then I got smoked and I started smoking and then I got smoked. Now it looks like no nobody's drinking. Everybody's walking. Everybody used to run. Oh, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> I guess that's because everybody's getting older. Well, nobody's getting younger. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, everybody's in the same boat, and nobody's rocking it anymore. Now everybody's just playing the same, except for you. You're drinking. I wish I was. You can have it. 
You've got your priorities all wrong, Missy. You don't need a drink. You need God. God? Nobody's doing God anymore. Okay, some people were doing God, but that was before everybody was doing sex, and now hardly anybody's doing sex anymore. <laughs> Nothing, darling. You look perfectly 
charming. There is no fault, there is no justification, it's all mood, stream of consciousness. <laughs> She's a working fatality, a casualty of function. Excuse me. Yes? Well, I couldn't help overhearing you. I'm sorry, I was just being emphatic. <coughs> Michael is very emphatic. If I'm not mistaken, you call me an idiot. Try not to take it personally, darling. I wasn't referring to you. You're not more idiotic than the next person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind being called an idiot. It's just that, well, you don't know. Well, I don't. Why on earth would I? Well, if you don't know me, how do you know I'm an idiot? What if I say you were an idiot? You've been an idiot for saying it. Now, let's discuss this green thing for a moment. I'm not entirely at first, but you must remember that unlike nature, green can take on a role of defensiveness and obstinacy. It has its deadly side. But don't you think it, it reflects my character? The character of color depends entirely on the color around it. You can't take a color out of context. Just how is it that you can call me an idiot, but if you call me, but if I call you an idiot, I'm an idiot for saying it. Do you mind? Who's this woman? I suppose she's a neighbor. Are you a neighbor? No, and there's nothing wrong with the way I'm dressed either. Nobody said there was. I don't make value judgments. I'm not a fascist. Michael never makes value judgments. I never said you were fascist. He's just being uh, sensitive. I'm not being sensitive. I am sensitive. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> I, I merely took exception of your sweeping generalizations about me and how about the world at large. After all, you said I was nothing but an animal in an animal world. I can do with beads, John. Of course you can't. You go inside for a moment and listen the lady over there. I can't deal with this! <laughs> What's he so upset about? I'm the one being, so being insulted. Of course you have. Can I write you a check or do you want cash? Well, I want <laughs> cash. Good. I'll write a check then. I don't want a check either. No. Well, what do you want? Nothing. Well, I certainly don't want your money. Oh, how interesting. Oh, I'm sorry if my offer offended you, but it's just that so often in situations involving Michael, it's much more expedient to simplify one's way out. Does he always go around insulting people? Michael is an artist. People don't understand him. He is intensely visual. The sight of red with yellow gives him heart palpitations. He can feel the space around him so much, so that he becomes the space. So you can imagine how difficult it is. He's cost me a fortune, but it's worth it. Left on my own, I couldn't decorate the closet. I have absolutely no imagination. Since I've known him, Michael and I have redecorated my apartment 18 times, including this one. 18 times up to bottom. We're only halfway through this one and already. I know we'll have to start again, so you can understand the frustration. And if Michael insulted you, I really apologize. Well, you put it that way. Thank you for explaining the situation. You know, although as situations go, I have to wonder, why go all the trouble? It's a lot of trouble, of course, yes. There are times when I felt like giving up. Michael gives me the inspiration to keep searching for that perfect constellation of form, texture, and color. We look on it for a and challenge. Oh, I think it's a lot of time. There are a lot of choices, probably too many. <laughs> it sounds to me like you'll never be satisfied. <laughs> yes, it does, uh, doesn't it? But one day, we'll find what you are looking for. And then what? Oh, what an interesting question. It's a little too interesting. Michael! I won't be compromised! Nobody's compromising anybody! At least you're putting in your two cents worth about the apartment. People usually do. They think they know how to decorate because they know what they like. I used to be the same, but I'm trying not to have any opinions now. <laughs> Dreary, isn't it? Huh? My god, I feel like jumping right here and now. I'd rather spread my guts all over the pavement to go back in there. Don't do that, darling. You leave too much up to chance. If you want to convey the right message, you may want to slash your wrist over a simple pair of button print. It has a stronger impact, more clarity. Don't you want to jump to you? Of course she doesn't. People don't jump from buildings anymore. Why not? The trend is much lighter, more whimsical. She's 
talking about suicide. No, I'm not. I'm talking about dying of boredom. Well, if you excuse me. I wonder if you could do me a favor. Yes. I wonder if you could call next door in about uh, five minutes. Asking for me is sounding quite urgent. Say your name is uh, Rhonda. I'll give the phone number. I'd love to oblige you, darling. But I no longer have a telephone. It didn't fit in with the decor. <laughs> Everybody has a telephone. Nobody doesn't have a telephone. How on earth does she survive? It wouldn't be so bad. Huh? I'd be lost. I wouldn't have a single friend. As it is now, I have 940. Friends? Yes. You have that many friends? Yes, isn't it? Isn't it? Fabulous. People are always saying, I can count the number of friends I have. When they actually mean that they only have a handful. A few, two, three hundred. But I've got 940. You don't think it was possible to be intimate with that many people? Intimate? Who said anything about being intimate? I couldn't care less about most of them. Then you're not really your friend, right? Why not? The whole idea of friendship is that you like someone. Like? Why would I like them? They're awful! What an odd notion. Huh? Well, if we're counting the friends I like, I've got actually more sweaters. I've got 268 sweaters, but I sort of like three of them. The friends are like, let's see. Hmm. No, I don't like her, but I love her job. <gasps> Can I count you? What, as a friend? No, I already count you as a friend. As a friend I like. But I'm not your friend. I beg your problem. Uh -huh. Well, I guess I have to put you in the don't like column, then. Don't put me in any column. Where did you just say put you? Don't put me anywhere you don't know me. I'm not a sweater. Well, what are you talking about? Of course you're not a sweater. You're not even wearing one. Jennifer, I want you to be a friend of mine. Well, any friend of Jenny's is a friend of mine. I'm not her friend. Oh, I'm not her friend, really. Well. That's all right. I'm not Jenny. Ah, you're not? Why aren't you? Because I'm pansy. Ah, oh well, it's the details that start to ruin a perfectly good relationship. I like to know as little about the person as possible. Preferably, <laughs> not being your own. I hope you guys don't think this is the way out. <laughs> not the best you want to. Small one, but it was a lot of smoke and it cleared 
uh, lays out quite nicely. It wasn't 15 minutes before I was finally alone again. Someone could have been seriously hurt. The fire department was there in the middle. I called them ahead of time, but I never tried it once again. This time I take a more subtle approach. There is no food, no drinks, and music is far too loud. <laughs> Thing, and I can tell you first hand that 
It's not the least bit interesting. In fact, it's very routine. Besides, people are too busy these days to be interested in other people's problems. Today, you have to pay someone to be interested. Is he doing what? Finding reasons not to join themselves. <laughs> so, what's your reason? Me? <laughs> I'm a humanitarian. <laughs> you don't seem that type. What type is that? Oh, you don't seem very friendly. Friendly? Why should I be friendly? I despise almost everyone I meet. I thought <laughs> humanitarians were supposed to like people. I like people on the whole. It's individuals I can't stand. Has she talked yet? No, she's vacillating. What? Oh, she hasn't made up her mind yet, one way or the other. I have made up my mind. Oh, she has made up her mind. <laughs> the police will be here soon. You better go now, or they will definitely talk you out of it. They're experts. They listen to all your problems. They sympathize with every one of them. Eventually, they convince you that life has some meaning, <laughs> that there's some little threat to hang on to. So you hang on as they slowly reel you in. But you never let go again, and not for the rest of your life. The next thing you know, you're old, and by that time, you've been hanging on so long and so tightly to that little credit break because it has to be pride loose. You know what? You're astonishingly more of it. What seems to be the problem? I already told you, Mrs. Wright. I'm not going to tell you again. Then get out of my way, then. You are not supposed to be up and around. <laughs> Where is this woman? Thy heart failure seems my dear. She doesn't really want me to die, because then she'd have to fill out a form. I have already filled it out. <laughs> I'm a hundred years old. Does that impress you? No. Yes, that, that, that's very old. That's very old. Yes, they sell people like her to look after me. She's not very nice. She doesn't have a very nice job looking after sick people, waiting for them to die. So she thinks she has to pretend she has no feelings. I haven't. But she's afraid. Don't pay any attention to her. Oh my, what a lovely evening. I never noticed. I haven't looked out this window in years. I took the streetcar as far as it went. Up where there weren't any houses, where the streetcar turned around. That was about 70 years ago, so I imagine the houses go quite a bit further now. But not far enough, of course. I imagine the streetcar eventually stops somewhere and turns around. There isn't any streetcar. There isn't? There hasn't been one in about 30 years. Well, that just goes to show you what I know. I haven't gone out since, well, in about 50 years. 50 years? Well, you can really only go out so far, and then you've got to turn around and come back. I find that somewhat limiting. I prefer to go nowhere at all. As it turns out, my apartment is much larger than I thought. In fact, it's enormous. It can be more than 100 square feet at the most. Yes, it's almost too much to grasp, isn't it? Of course, it looks a lot smaller since she came to look after me. <laughs> She cleaned it all up, put everything in order, kicked Albert out. <coughs> she has a very sanitary point of view, doesn't like pigeons. I imagine he'll come back though, when he's had enough of flying. Well, he's not coming back in here. I used to have all kinds of things piled up against this window. Like this umbrella. Go ahead, take it. <laughs> A 
until they came and took everything away. And whilst Albert saw the window, there was just no keeping him. After all those years, his little head was suddenly filled with big ideas. After what years? Those years! Well, how many, how many years are we talking about exactly? I don't know. Around 50? It doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. Must be a riddle. I don't get it. Neither do I. <laughs> well, that's just a story. It's not important. People attach too much importance to these things. That reminds me of another story. <clears throat> oh my, what a lovely evening. <laughs> you were going to tell me something. What about? I don't know, something reminded you of a story. A story. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I guess you don't remember it. It's not important for me. Well, actually, I thought it might be somehow important. You're looking for something important. You know, well, I need yes, I'm looking for something. I don't have anything. Just an empty room. It will be coming up for rent soon. If you're interested. No, I, I don't need a room. It's a place to hang your head, to sort out all your shoes. I, I don't need to sort all my shoes. All my shoes are the same. All seven pairs. I have seven hats also. I lost track, you see? I went to sleep, and then I had a dream. I dreamed that I woke up and I made my way to work. And when work was over, I came back home. And, and then I went to sleep, and, and then I woke up. I think I'll go. It's Wednesday. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I thought it would make you feel better. <laughs> Not really. You see, when I got up this morning, I wasn't exactly sure what day it was. And for that brief moment, I stood. Or I should say, I lay on very shaky ground. After all, how could I act with assuredness? How could I plunge headlong? into Friday's world when it's actually Saturday. And so, I just still see wondering this question. That's when I noticed my hands, how they move with amazing dexterity. But this flexibility, this movement of hands, can never extend beyond its own boundaries. Can only reach as far as the fingertips, no further. So, I tried to erase these things from my memory, but then I began to notice other things. For example, the meaning of shoes. They were little prisons for my feet. I could run a million miles in any direction and still not be able to escape them. For me to turn my ear around my head, my mind could expand into infinite space and still not change the shape of my head. And now, I was traveling, I was traveling an unknown road, along a familiar road. And it led exactly the direction I was going to, but not by coincidence. The asphalt was not laying itself a path in front of me. I was merely following a prearranged course. And then something happened. Something that had never happened to me before. I was late for work, you see. And when I arrived in town at my little space, it was taken. I was late for work, you see, and somebody had taken my space. I didn't know what to do, so I just stared straight ahead. And then I put my car into gear and drove into it. Drove right into this other car, and then again, and again, and again, until finally this other car, this intruder in my space, was smashed up against the building like an accordion. So now I have my space back. And my car. There didn't seem to be another choice, no place else to go, you see. I got out of the car and I tried to make my way to work. And that's when I realized it wasn't my space at all. Somehow I got completely turned around. I had always depended on the road which led me there, much as I always thought that one thing leads to another. And then I saw this building and I thought, well, I thought I'd come up here and get a better perspective of my exact situation. 
I'm from here to this right there. There are no spaces left, you see. I have no place to park my car. Have you tried the bay? <laughs> Don't you understand? Of course I understand. You didn't need to make such a long speech. When you're a hundred years old, you'll understand everything. And then you'll die. <laughs> Why, wait. Something interesting might happen. But then again, it might not. I think you should jump now. <laughs> That's what you want to do. I think you should do it. There, is, there really is no, no, no reason to leave, is there? Not really. It's sort of disappointing. I wonder what they, well, they threw my car. Oh, now I remember. What? That story. What story? Some years ago, I went to Paris to see the Mona Lisa. It's in the Louvre, you know, the largest building in the world, probably. But as it turns out, Mona Lisa is very small. <laughs> so naturally, I couldn't find it. I kept looking for something big. But then I saw a huge crowd of people all standing around looking disappointed, and there she was, smiling as if she knew. <laughs> That's it? That's the whole story? <laughs> yes. How have you managed to live this long? <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Shut up in your room like that. You were going out. There are other places to go besides out. There's E, there's around, there's under, over, between, down. Well, you might go down, but you might as well go up. If you're going to go to the trouble of jumping, I think you should try going up and see what happens. <laughs> Albert went up, straight up. Albert was a pigeon. He didn't know that. <laughs> Not for sure. He hadn't flown a day in his life. Not until the day we let him go. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>